know, up till now, these photos have been sort of like, I went to this really exotic place or I did this really high level planning thing, but I want to be really clear, you guys, that's not the only way to do landscape photography. Sometimes the way that a, a great photo or beautiful photo unfolds is simply by being willing to follow your curiosity and explore a place that you have been to many times that maybe you just want to look at in a little bit of a different way. So this is in Death Valley, um, which is one of my local national parks out here in California. It's about three and a half hours away from me. So I've spent quite a lot of time here in Death Valley. And um, one of the places that I have poo-pooed for many years in Death Valley is called Artist Drive. And it's this long snaking road that kind of winds through hills that look like this. And there's there are a lot of different colors of minerals in, in the hills. But uh, the last time, you know, years ago when I took this drive, I thought they're all just kind of pale. It's just all this like pale tan color. It's not really speaking to me as a photographer. But for whatever reason, when I was just there a couple of weeks ago, I decided, you know what? I haven't been down the artist drive in a long time, in probably five or six years. Maybe it's time, you know, the way that I approach photography has changed, the way that I look at the world has changed. Maybe it's time to give artist drive another chance and to see. Is there something here that I missed the last time that I was here? And so I started to just drive around uh, the artist drive and, and I was really blown away. I thought this was actually a spectacularly beautiful spot. And uh, rather than just stay on the road, um, one of the things I decided to do, because I, I just know this from visiting Death Valley and from traveling around the world, is that there are so many beautiful, cool things lurking just off the beaten path. So, you know, when you're going to these really iconic locations, a lot of times there's a real obvious view, but if you just kind of wander down the way or go into the forest or go over the next hill, you'll find something that is totally and unique to your experience. And this is one of my favorite things about nature photography is, is having very personal, unique experiences within the landscape. And so I was just driving through Artist Drive. I stopped at a little wash and I thought, you know what, what's up there? There's a cool looking bluff at the end of this wash. I'm just gonna walk up there, see what I see. Maybe I won't find anything, but maybe I'll just have a fun time hiking around in Death Valley. And as I got farther up the wash, I noticed that at the base of this bluff, there are all these cool eroded patterns. And uh, that kind of got my photography spidey sense tingling. And I thought, ooh, I mean, I just know out of experience now to look for kind of overlapping patterns within the landscape. And I know that there's usually a lot of potential for photography there. So I walked up into this little, these folded ridges of, uh, of earth here, of eroded earth. And when I got up and I looked back the other direction, man, they were just the coolest thing. There were these uh, eroded like little uh, channels, all of these little tiny uh, rivulets where you could see maybe during a flash flood, the water would flow down and create these cool serpentine pathways through the landscape. And anytime I see a pathway, I'm thinking, oh, yes, this is a great opportunity for a leading line to create a directionality and flow within a photograph. And so as I wandered around seeing all these cool little channels and details, it just got my mind thinking, this might be a really good place to come back to uh, at sunrise or sunset when the light across the landscape here is a little bit more even than to allow the inherent detail of these rivulets to come out as opposed to these really harsh shadows. Uh, and so later that same afternoon, actually, there was a, a quite a big storm that rolled through into Death Valley and it was creating all this wonderful spotlighting on the landscape. Okay, this is gonna be perfect. So I jumped in the car, I drove back to Artist Drive and I wandered up this same wash. And now when I got up to those rivulets, man, the light across the landscape was just absolutely beautiful. So I started snapping photo after photo after photo. And here I really wanted to use my wide angle because those lines, all these beautiful parallel lines, I knew would create kind of a vortex effect to really suck the viewer into the photograph and propel them from the foreground all the way through to the background. And I don't know if this happens to you guys, but for whatever reason, that particular night, I could not see, like my photographic vision was failing me. I could not see whether I had a good composition or a bad composition. And that just happens sometimes. And so what I did in that particular case is I made sure that my settings were good, right? So I dialed in my camera. I knew I wanted a sunburst. Uh, so I put my uh, or my aperture F16. 
I was at ISO 64, 14 millimeters. That led me to a shutter speed of a hundredth of a second. And then a white balance sort of in the cloudy range to help bring out some of the warm tones in the photograph. So whenever I'm in a scene like this, I've got my technicals dialed in, but I can't really see if I've got a good composition. I'll just shoot. I'll shoot a bunch of stuff. I know I don't have to worry about uh, my settings anymore because I've already dialed those in. I, I basically biased my exposure so that I, I'm trying to hold as much highlight detail as possible, but not letting my shadows drop to pure black. And I will just shoot a bunch of different compositions. I'll have some ideas, but I will just just try a bunch of st different stuff. I'll put the photo, uh, put the sun in different spots. I'll try verticals, I'll try horizontals, I'll, I'll adjust the horizon, I'll adjust how close I'm getting to the landscape, just little steps to the left or to the right. Because I know that um, if I fixate on the fact that I can't find the perfect composition in the moment, it's gonna drive me crazy. So I'm just gonna give myself a little bit of space, a little bit of gray. So I'm gonna shoot a bunch of different stuff I'm just gonna spray and pray, so to speak. And then I'm gonna decide once I get back home, I even shot photos without the sun in them. I'm just gonna try a bunch of different things. And then when I get back home, that's when I'm gonna make the final decision about which one of these photos works or not. So I knew, like I said, in terms of composition, I wanted to get these lines. I wanted them to flow into the frame. I knew I wanted the sunburst with a little bit of cloud overarching over the top. So I have the basic building blocks of my composition built out. And then I just tried a bunch of different shots that hit those same, that use those same building blocks, knowing that I could pick the final composition uh, in the end. So ultimately after I got back home, this was the photo that I liked the most. It just resonated in terms of the balance. You can see that the, the leading lines here, I've got like kind of a nice oscillation between light and dark. And they flow towards that sort of middle left third. And then I have the sun on the opposite third to create a little bit of balance there. I've got a nice diagonal going on there in the clouds in the sky. And I like how the, uh, the leading lines themselves came out of the corners of the frame. So that's how I decided in the end that this was the one that I liked the best. So working with this as my raw file, I followed a pretty similar process to the very first photo that I showed you. First thing I did, because I had bias this exposure toward the dark side in order to maintain detail in the highlights, I basically just brightened it up. So I brightened it up, I pulled the highlights down a little bit so they weren't super blown out. And then the sky was still a little bit too bright. So I dropped a graduated filter over the sky to pull down the exposure, pull down the highlights. That left me with a photo looking like this, which is pretty flat. So then I went into my tone curve and I did a simple S curve, pulled the highlights up, pulled the shadows down, to bring in that global contrast. And now I really wanted to emphasize the light and dark oscillation in those leading lines there in the foreground. So I used the adjustment brush within Lightroom. This is all within Lightroom to do a little bit of dodging and burning. So you can see, I just got, made the shadows a little bit darker and the highlights a little bit brighter to help really tighten up that oscillation, that variation between the light and the dark to help uh, really bring out the contrast to make those leading lines pop. And then a little bit of a vignette on the end and boom, that's how it was. So this just came about from being willing to explore, willing to see something I'd seen before that I wasn't interested in, to give it a second chance to be willing to explore a little bit more um, and it resulted in one of my favorite photos from this particular spring.